I just found out like two minutes ago that Lorraine Warren, the author of the cases that some of these Conjuring movies are based on, has just passed away. So I'm going to go ahead and dedicate this episode of Things You Missed to Lorraine Warren. And if you want to hear about how La Llorona sets up for another movie, then stick around to the end of this video. Welcome back to Things You Missed, but first, rant time. I know it's become kind of a horror cliche for a character to brush off something supernatural by telling themselves that it was just in their imagination, but the curse of La Llorona takes this to the most ridiculous level I've ever seen. Like almost every character has ample opportunity to say, hey, you know that thing that just happened? That wasn't normal. Maybe I should get help. Maybe I should make like Andre 3000 and get up and go to church. But they don't. It's so frustrating. Like those two Alvarez boys who tell the social worker that she'll hurt us if they leave the closet. Why would they say that and not clarify that they're talking about about a spooky ghost, not their mother who's being investigated, and then the main family is even worse. They each have individual encounters with La Llorona, but when asked what happens, they're like, nope, nothing happened. Now the mom, I get, because she has to uphold her credibility because she has a job. But the kids have no reason to hide it, and it's just completely illogical. And then around the midpoint, they all encounter La Llorona together, and they basically get together and decide, nope, that was nothing, right? We didn't see anything. But anyway, that was frustrating, but let's move on to the things you missed. The first clue that this is just The Conjuring but with Spanish legends comes in as soon as we get into the main setting of the movie, Los Angeles, 1973. A long, fast-moving handheld tracking shot takes us through the house in the exact same style of the opening of The Conjuring. When we first meet Anna's daughter, Sam, she's watching an episode of Scooby-Doo. Now this is probably the point where everybody leaves a comment about me being Shaggy's brother, so I'm gonna go ahead and use just 0.1% of my power to extract this thing you missed. The episode that she's watching features someone pretending to be a ghost in order to terrorize people, as many Scooby-Doo episodes do. At the end of The Curse of La Llorona, we are led to believe, however obvious it may have been, that La Llorona broke the fire seed barrier set up at the door and got into the house, when in reality it was actually Patricia Alvarez, the mother who had her two sons taken by La Llorona and thought that by sacrificing Anna's kids she could get hers back. She wears similar clothing and takes off her shoes to give the appearance of the ghost, just like the villain in that Scooby-Doo episode. The actress who plays Anna also played Velma in the live-action Scooby-Doo movies. The scene where Samantha sees La Llorona through the clear umbrella next to the swimming pool is very reminiscent of a short film called Cam Closer, in which the supernatural occurrences only show up through a cell phone camera. I'd like to believe that that umbrella scene isn't blatant plagiarism because the director of Cam Closer, David F. Sandberg, also directed Annabelle Creation, which is a part of the universe, so maybe they had his blessing to lift the concept. I'd still love to see Cam Closer adapted into a feature film in the style of Lights Out. But speaking of lights being out, and yes I'm aware that is a terrible transition, during the scene that takes place in the middle of the night where Anna calls out asking if someone's in the house, as if the intruder or ghost is just gonna be like, oh you got me, April Fools. But Anna goes back to look into her room, and if you look to the right side of the doorway, you can spot La Llorona standing there in the corner, hiding in the dark. Now I was going to point out that Father Perez is the same priest that helps Mia and John out in Annabelle, but the movie makes it pretty clear when he explains that he opened up his mind to things out of the ordinary after an incident with a doll. So I'll point out a couple of other Annabelle connections instead. Misty is the name of the doll that Sam carries around and nearly kills them all when she accidentally breaks the fire seed barrier when trying to grab the doll from outside. It resembles a Raggedy Ann doll, the real life version upon which the Annabelle doll is based on. Also, in my last episode, when I talked about the Annabelle Comes Home trailer, one of the things I pointed out was this wedding dress, in the Warren's room of cursed objects. Now that La Llorona is confirmed to be part of the Conjuring universe, I think it's very likely that this is La Llorona's dress. Anna is, after all, able to collect the sapphire locket off of her when trying to banish her from the house, so it stands to reason that by fully defeating the Weeping Woman, Ed and Lorraine could, at some point, obtain this dress. It is hinted at that she survives at the end of the movie, based on the final shot, where Anna looks back and sees something in the reflection of the puddle, which is consistent with the numerous occasions of La Llorona appearing in mirrors and causing them to break. But does this mean that we're going to see a La Llorona dos? Well, I have a better suggestion. The Conjuring and The Conjuring 2 both open with Ed and Lorraine Warren on a case that's unrelated to the main case of the movie. The director of The Curse of La Llorona was Michael Chavez, who's also supposed to direct The Conjuring 3. Father Perez tells Anna that the church has people who can deal with evil spirits, but it takes several weeks for these things to be approved by the church. We see the same thing happen in The Conjuring, where the exorcism isn't approved until after it's already over. The Vatican approved the exorcism. <laughs> nice timing. 
So my idea is that Father Perez puts in the request for Anna anyways, and the opening of The Conjuring 3, or really any Conjuring movie, shows La Llorona being defeated and her spirit being locked inside of the wedding dress, which is kept safely in Ed Warren's home. As far as further connections go, the shaman Raphael, who helps out the family, explains that he no longer works with the church, and he made it seem like there's some history there, so I wouldn't be too surprised to see more of his story in another movie. The next one is a bit of a spoiler if you haven't seen The Conjuring 2, but I mean, I think we all know what happens. When they finally do banish La Llorona by stabbing her with a cross, she disappears in a manner that looks almost exactly like the defeat of Valak at the end of The Conjuring 2, where Lorraine banishes the demon back to hell. So it seems that neither one of these entities is gone for good. I'm gonna be doing a little mini marathon where I'll be covering all three Annabelle movies here on Things You Missed, so remember to subscribe to CZ's World for new horrors every week, ring the death bell for notifications, and I'll see you in the next one, assuming we both survive.